In this video, I will be demonstrating the synthesis of the NSAID Fenbufen. Fenbufen is a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug, which has the brand name Lidrofen. However, most of you are probably unfamiliar with this drug as it was taken off the market in 2010 due to concerns over liver toxicity. Strangely, fenbufen is included in the aryl propionic acid class of NSAIDs along with ibuprofen and naproxen, despite fenbufen not having a propionic acid moiety in its structure. Looking at the structure of fenbufen, it can be disconnected here, showing that it can be accessed from the friedel crafts acylation between biphenyl and succinic anhydride. For the synthesis, I'm going to be following the procedure as laid out in Siddig's Pharmaceutical Manufacturing Encyclopedia. To begin, 30 mL of nitrobenzene is added to a 250 mL 3 necked round bottom flask. Nitrobenzene is a pretty common solvent to use in Friedel Crafts reactions, as the nitro group is strongly electron withdrawing, which deactivates the aromatic ring, preventing it from acting as a nucleophile towards carbocations and acylium ions, while also being able to dissolve aluminum trichloride and whatever substrate you're working with. So then, with strong stirring, 8.1 grams of aluminum trichloride was added to the nitrobenzene and allowed to fully dissolve. Remember to minimize the handling time of aluminum trichloride in air as it is sensitive to atmospheric moisture. The solution was then cooled on an ice bath to below 10 degrees Celsius. Meanwhile, to a mortar and pestle was added 4.5 grams of biphenyl and 3 grams of succinic anhydride, both of which were prepared in previous videos. The resulting powder was then slowly added into the aluminum trichloride and nitrobenzene solution while maintaining the temperature below 10 degrees Celsius. Once the addition had been completed, the reaction mixture was allowed to stir at room temperature for 4 days. And yes, that's actually in the procedure, I didn't just forget about the flask for half a week. I suppose it's just one of those really slow reactions. The reaction mixture was then quenched by pouring it into a mixture of 60 grams of ice water with 10 milliliters of concentrated hydrochloric acid. And now I have to separate the product from the quenched reaction mixture, and the first step is to remove the nitrobenzene via steam distillation. A lot of the reaction mixture was stuck to the walls of the beaker, so I used some ethanol to dissolve it and add it to the flask. I then set up for a simple distillation and steam distilled the mixture. I ended up collecting 250 ml of distillate in total, with about 25 ml of a lower organic layer consisting of the recovered nitrobenzene and 225 ml of water. The flask was allowed to cool down to room temperature before being chilled on ice. The crude product was then filtered off and then washed twice with some water. After filtering, I was left with this brown solid. Next, 240 ml of a 3% sodium carbonate solution was prepared. The sodium carbonate solution was then heated until it was nearly boiling, and then the crude product was added and allowed to fully dissolve. I tried decolorizing the solution at this step using activated charcoal, however it didn't seem to have any effect. I also added a bit of sea light to try and capture any small particulates, and then filtered the solution. So, I just decided to move on to the next step, which was adding 10% sulfuric acid until the pH was around 1, which precipitated out all of the crude fenbufen. I ended up having to transfer the mixture into a larger beaker since the acidification of the sodium carbonate solution releases a lot of CO2. I then filtered off the crude fenbufen and washed it a couple times with water. I ended up with this horribly sticky gray mass of material that I had to dissolve out of the filter using acetone. The acetone solution of our crude product was poured into a dish and allowed to evaporate off. This left me with 7.9 grams of a very dirty looking material, so I needed further purification. I then dissolved the crude material in a minimal amount of boiling ethanol. I added some activated charcoal and then hot filtered the solution, and this time it seemed to have successfully removed the darkly colored impurities. The solution cooled down a little while filtering, so I reheated it to fully dissolve everything and then set it aside to slowly cool and crystallize. I then cooled down the beaker in the freezer to fully precipitate out the product, filtered it off, and then washed with a little chilled ethanol. 
I ended up with 4.1 grams of a white crystalline powder, which corresponds to a 55% yield. But unfortunately, there was no reported yield for the literature procedure I was following, so I can't really make a comparison there. Now that I have a product that seems to be decently pure, I'm going to have to run some tests to figure out if it actually is fenbufen. The first thing I tested was the melting point. Now the literature lists the melting point between 184 to 187 degrees Celsius, however it also states that decomposition can begin to occur above 176 degrees, so it's hard to get a perfectly fixed number for the melting point due to that. But when I ran the sample, I got a melting point of 183 degrees Celsius at a heating rate of 10 degrees Celsius per minute, which is not bad, though it might indicate the presence of some slight impurities. And you can also see that the sample did in fact decompose due to the discoloration. So the next thing I did was run a TLC to try and see if I could find any impurities in the sample. As an eluent, I used DCM with a single drop of glacial acetic acid added. The left lane contains the starting biphenyl, and the right lane contains the fenbufen, though unfortunately I did not have a sample of pure fenbufen to make a reference spot. It appears that the product I made has no residual biphenyl, though there is a tiny spot remaining on the spot line, and also a very faint spot just above the main spot on the fenbufen, so there is a minor impurity present. I tried a permanganate stain, and it seemed to only develop the fenbufen spot and maybe a bit of the biphenyl, and when I heated the plate, it all just turned into a uniform brown color. And, on a final note, the fenbufen sample appeared to be fluorescent to 365 and 395 nanometer UV light. Now I'm not sure if this is actually the fenbufen itself fluorescing, or if it's one of the minor contaminants fluorescing. But if you wanted to get an even purer sample, I'd recommend just doing another recrystallization with activated charcoal, and you should get a higher quality product. Anyways, I'm hoping to get some more videos out soon, and thanks for watching.